Okay. So let's, um, yeah, did it start the, okay. So hello everyone. This is chapter 25. We'll discuss uh, web scraping, which is a technique where we, we extract data from the web. Um, if, if API is not provided for any type of um, um, web content that you want to get your data from, um, you could use uh, we could use this kind of uh, technique, which is web scraping. Um, now, the fundamentals for web scraping is basically if you have a knowledge in HTML or CSS, a little bit of HTML and CSS, you will be fine with uh, web, web scraping. We, uh, like um, on the basic level, uh, if you want to be, dig deeper, it could like have some kind of uh, complexity, but um, it's not that much, uh, to be honest. Um, so yeah, let's begin. So the prerequisite is um, we will use uh, uh, a library called uh, RVEST, which is a um, daily like it's like I think it's um, it's the same as Beautiful Soup for Python, something like that. Same way, same way we uh, extract data from the structure of HTML. Um, and tidyverse uh, because uh, I think they, they say that it's, uh, it's not yeah it's not uh, inside the tidyverse but it uh, it's uh, it's a core member but it's not inside tidyverse so uh, the type the, when you deal with data in Arvest you you deal with uh, tidy tidy data so so you have to import force um, yeah. So first thing first, you mentioned here that the scraping ethics and legalities, which is when you should um, be able in a legal way, basically, to extract data and when you don't. So let's discuss this. Uh, leg legalities depend on uh, depend a lot on where you live. However, uh, as general principle, if the data is public, non-personal and factual, you are likely to be okay. So uh, there is uh, these three factors are important because they are connected to the site's terms and condition. It's personally identifiable information and copyrights as we will discuss below. If the data is in public, non-personal or factual, or you're scraping the data specifically to make money with it, you will need to take a, uh, to talk to, to a lawyer. In any case, you should be respectful of the resources of the server hosting, the pages you are scrubbing, uh, of the pages that you are scrubbing. And mostly, uh, most most importantly, this means that if you are scrubbing many pages, you should be, make sure to wait a little between each request. Do not like overwhelm the server with all these uh, uh, heavyweight uh, requests at the same time. Um, so, uh, and one easy way to use to do this so is to use Polite package by Dimitrio, uh, Dimitro, and uh, it will automatically pause between requests and catch uh, catch the results. So you say you never ask for uh, the same page twice. And I think um, Arvest is using this internally. I think so. We are good to go um, now. Terms of service. If you look closely, you will find in many websites. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Is that is that mentioned in the book that Arvest is using this polite package? Um, I I think I see it when when I was um like trying to scrape some data. It's in in the in the in, in behind the scene. Oh. I see. Uh, I say. Um, I've seen polite has been run. So yeah, but oh. I don't. I, I I'm not confirming this list yet. So we couldn't. Could see it. Uh, let's see the harvest. So this is harvest. I remember seeing it. So yeah. Yeah, I highly recommend using our best concert with 
Ulai. So it's not consist or yeah. But you, you, it's the you could use it, them both together. I think this is how what you say here. Um, I highly recommend using your best in concert with Polite. The Polite package ensures that you are respecting the robots. Yeah. So we'll talk more about robots. I think. Um, so this robot, the text robots, the text is is what is a like basically the what terms of service or what conditions if you want to. Uh, extract, extract data from uh, a specific website before you doing this for use or something. You should check this uh, the report uh, the uh, robots.txt file and it exists in every single uh, website over there. Um, you could see if I think even this one. Don't know how how I could like reach it. We'll we'll see it in in the end. So I will I'll show you how you could uh, see it in any website before we begin our scrapping. Um, even the data is public, you should be extremely careful about scraping personally identifiable information. Yes, uh, any type of personal data, any sensitive data, you should be care care uh, much. Uh, not just scrape anything for, at any time. You should be careful because this is. This could be a problem uh, in a legal way, illegal to do this. So you have to check the terms of service, the robust file. Um, if it's public, almost every time it's, it's okay. Uh, but uh, stay care, be careful because it's this this guy just have some kind of serious problem um, for for anyone that do this uh, without thinking. So. While the researcher felt that there was nothing wrong with this, with that, with this sense, the data were already public. This work was uh, was widely condemned due to the ethics of concern around um, around identifiably of user identifi identifiability of users whose information was released in the data set. If your work involves scraping personally identifying information, we strongly recommend reading out uh, the OKQ study as well as uh, similar studies with questionable research ethics. So here he talks about uh, copyrights. So yeah, this like this is very important, but we just want to get into more uh, like the practice, the practice of scraping stuff. Um, so, as I said before, it's, yeah, if you have HTML basics, it's, you, will, it's, you will find it very easy to do this um, scraping websites because it's, if you, the structure itself is very, you, uh, very profound. You, you find the website as a tree. If you see here, if you go and inspect this page, for example, and see this uh, this tree like structure, you will see that there is a header. There is HTML element and the header and body. In the head, there is uh, tags inside the head. Inside the body, there is other tags. And the, this is, of course, this is like um, structured and uh, stylized while with CSS. Um, but yeah, this is basically the, the H, any any page you'll find it that way. Uh, so here he just describes HTML, uh, what is HTML and how how it's uh, useful. Let's see. HTML has a hierarchical structure, yes, form from element, which is consists of starting tag and ending tag. Uh, option attribute is ID and end tag uh, is this one. Contents, everything between the start. Yeah, content is between the tags. Um, head, head here, uh, you see the title. In the end of the title, so this is the the closing tag. This is the opening tag, and uh, between them is the content, and so on and so forth. All all of them are this way. Um, so web scraping is possible because most pages that contain data that you want to scrape generally have a consistent structure, which is the general HTML structure. And um, here we talk about elements. There are over hundred elements. Some some of 
So most important are every HTML element have a HTML tag, of course. Uh, we see this uh, in this page even. Um, and it must have two children, the head and the body that we talked about. Yes, uh, block, uh, block tag like H1, section, B, uh, order, um, ordered list. Uh, B is paragraph. Okay, and um, yeah, this is a normal tag for HTML. Uh, B is for bold, I for real italics. A for links or anchor. It's acronym for anchor. Uh, if you encountered a tag that you had never seen before, you can find out what what it does uh, in uh, the MDN web docs, and it contains all of the tags, HTML tags, the new one and the the old one. So you will find it very useful if you are not used to um, or you find uh, some kind of weird tags. That you don't know about. Um, so most element can have content. Yes, in between their start and end, this content either it be a text or more elements. So the structure, as, it, as I said before, it's just like tree structure. You see here, if you see the header, the header itself contain an app bar, an app bar contain a dev, a dev contain buttons, uh, and and so on and so forth. The nav itself is having an, another nav inside it. And another nav have the order list and so on for us. It's just a tree structure. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. looks uh, looks interesting, you know. Yeah, if you know HTML, it's like uh, uh, very basic. Uh, if, if you deal with uh, web development a lot, you will find it very easy to uh, handle yourself. Use do some stuff scrape it uh, um even if you if you want to play with the with the page itself for example you see here this paragraph this is um this is a paragraph right if you want to change something some of uh, its uh, characteristics or attribute you could change this color to an aqua like or like this way blue and you could play with the pages to just uh, see how you could design or redesign or just figuring out stuff uh, in the pay in the web page. And this is particularly useful if you do shiny development because you you basically do all this with HTML and CSS. So every design, every web design. Uh, uh, workflow have to deal with HTML and CSS. So if you know a little bit about both, you will, you are in good hands. Um, yeah. So attribute. Yeah, nice. yeah. So yeah, the attributes tags tags can have named attributes, which is look like name one equal value, name equal value. This is a, this is the attributes and you could we could see the attributes very quickly. You see here, um, this is a class attribute, and it has this value, and so on forth, ID. This is the attribute, and this is its value. So it's just a attributes uh, attached to each um, HTML element, and they all, all have their own attributes. Uh, some, someone, some of them are common, like we will see. Like class, this class attribute, we'll use it a lot. This ID also we could use it a lot um, to stylize or to get elements, uh, but we'll see. So extracting data. So let's go into the extra the 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 fun part. So to get started scraping, you you need the URL first of the page, of course, uh, that you will you want to scrape, and then. Um, Usually in the web browser, you will then need to read HTML for the page into R with read M HTML. Read HTML is a function that is provided in our best uh, package where you could read, um, if you provide an URL, you read the HTML element, uh, each HTML, HTML um, structure, overall structure, like this, this whole structure has been read into uh into a text i think or, or a string and then you could like uh search for each one of them 
I don't remember if it's a string or, or an HTML document, which is an object. I don't remember, but uh, I think, yeah, it could be an object or, yeah, it's an object, I think. So let's see it. Let's see it in action. So let's copy this. Let's go to our studio. And let's see. So this is a tidyverse um, page. You see this? OK. So it's an, it's an HTML document, something like uh, some, some object, some kind of object defined. Uh, um customizer and define so you see here that it's it begin with html lang -ing, which is if you go to the page of um diverse you see the same thing so you, basically you're getting you're getting all the um, uh, all the tags or uh, all the structure of html document the overall structure um let's continue so yes this is this is uh, the same thing. Let's go into yeah. Arpus include the functions that let you write HTML uh, in line. So you could like if you want to just like, but I don't I don't see if it's useful because. So yeah, I would say that it, either, uh, so it's uh, if you have if you want to so, to scrape uh, your own HTML, you you are the ones defining the HTML uh, yourself. Uh, and what you, you want to write it in line and then script some data from it. Um, here is a function minimal HTML, which is uh, you put you put, you put inside it, uh, tags and it's translated to HTML document. And then you can use it um, inside um, inside your application or so. Uh, now that you have HTML in R, it's time to extract data for, uh, of interest. Let's first learn about CSS selector. So CSS selector, I, I would say it's the most important thing to, you have to, have to, to know um, in web scraping uh, because it's, um, it's the way that you select elements or uh, like uh, get elements from the web page, the structure of the web page using this kind of selectors. So it's called selector, so it's selected, selecting elements. Uh, and it uses CSS. Uh, so CSS selector itself, it's a way uh, it's it designed or built in, at the beginning to to make it easy for to stylize um, an element, an HTML element with CSS code. Uh, like I said, like I did before, just just a couple of moments ago, when I did this inspect, when I do inspect. Thing. I am referring to an element, and then if we do select an element in the page and do this, it's selecting the element in the structure itself. If I have the element in the structure, now I can do a lot, a lot of things with it. But since we are dealing with just programming, and we we should have this automated, um, we should have a way to select elements without. Um, Without us in the in the process, basically. Um, so how we do this by using CSS selectors, and uh, the CSS. Yeah, let's we'll see what what you'll see here. So to find elements, CSS is a short for cascading. Yes, this is the um, uh, the language that you we use to style HTML uh, pages, and. Uh, is a tool for defining visual styling. Yes, um, CSS includes a, a mature uh, language for selecting elements. So called CSS selectors. Yes, CSS selector define patterns um, and are useful for scraping because they provide concise in describing which element you want to extract. Okay, so let's go into the, the hands-on. We will come back to CSS selector in more details in section 25.5. But luckily, we can get a long way with just three selectors. So this is our the three main selectors. I think I, I'm using second one most of the time. I don't uh, use this one or this one. Uh, and I would say why. But basically, you have the element itself. So you have to tag the HTML element. 
you could select the element by saying its name without, of course, the, the tags. Um, so it's if you say B, it will select every uh, the first B uh, or paragraph element you see in the structure of the web page. Um, and this could be useful sometime, but it's not efficient because you want you want to select um, if you you have like hundred P's and then. You want to select one in the middle or one of the last or one of the between. Uh, you will caught up with a lot of uh, stuff. So we don't usually use this. Uh, the second type is uh, dot title. What is dot title? Dot title is a class. So a class in HTML is like what we we seen. Okay, again, what we see here this is a cell. This dev or the division or section having a class, which is an attribute in each, in every HTML element, uh, and the class called cell. And you see here is we have we don't have just one cell. We have a lot of cells because we are repeating the same structure again and again. And this is logical because you we are just structuring some text in the page. Um, and you see here cell, 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 cell. Yes, all of them are cell. Um, so it's the class in its definition. It's a way that you select multiple element or one element, one or more elements um, in the page, because uh, you you could have multiple elements with the same class, as we see here. See here. We want to do, uh, there's, there's a lot of cell in, in this web page. So every class of, if every one of them, we can control it using this uh, or stylize it using this class. So if I want to change every, every cell, I would say uh, every cell class, I would say, okay, colorize this cell class with this specific uh, color or change its size or do something with it. Um, so it's a way to select one or more element uh, for stylizing purposes. But here we we doing it with, for web scraping. We selecting it for uh, to select it from in the web page itself. So yeah, this is the one. Uh, the second one, uh, where is it? Yeah, this is the second one, and we. We specify dot dot is a class. So uh, in CSS itself, we don't say uh, we want when we want to stylize um, an element. We don't say that uh, it's a title or a class title. No, it's a uh, so uh, the 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 shortcut for class in CSS is dot. So dot is meaning the class. Dot title is a class title, um, and uh third and final one is the id attribute we see we have seen already the id attribute uh it's the same as class but it's a unique identifier for an element so if you if you have an unique uh, you can't have two same ids in the web page um you have to have one just one id so if you want to just select one element and just one uh you could use this if you want to select multiple elements at the same time, you use the class, uh, the class syntax. So this is a class syntax, and this is the ID syntax. Uh, the ID is uh, shortcut is um, the hash. hash. Um, and yeah, this is it. Now, how we could use RVEST to collect data? So we see that uh, we define the minimal HTML use the minimal HTML function to have a some kind of uh, uh, an example. But, um, and this example you see here, we have an ID with first, we have a class, it's important. We want to select both. Uh, we want to let use, uh, use each one of those types. So how we could do it now, the HTML elements, is a function that's provided by RVEST, where you select each element in the web page that um, that specify by a selector. So 
the selector here is not a selector. It's, it's just a name of the tag, which is the first type that we talked about, the name of the tag. Uh, and we select by using this, we're saying to uh, our, our best, get all elements or get, get all paragraphs that have um, that in the page, basically. So it will see this one and this one, you'll get both. So you will get this and this. So this is a this is a three um, three tags. Okay. When we do HTML elements B, we selecting these two paragraphs together because they see okay we have two paragraphs overall. If you have five, it will be five. It will get all the element or all all the tags that have B B in it or is a B tag. So yeah, and we see this here. Um, so second one is selecting HTML elements, every element that have dot important class. So that important, we, this is the syntax dot and the name of the class. Here we see the class is, is, uh, is important uh, as an attribute uh, of the tag. So if you want to select it, we just, say okay dot important there is a class named important in this in the in this html uh document and they want to select it so get it get the class that's called uh which is this dot the class that named important same thing uh and you see here the uh the result get only the important uh paragraph uh this one uh, and the third one same uh but in, uh, it's in id since we are defining ID first here, we selecting with hash first. So this is basically the first, the three basic types that we will use. You will use differently in in web scraping all the time. This is how we could select elements in the page. And um, let's try it in this specific page. Let's try it. like make it like pretty quick uh, demo. So. When you call, when you do, uh, when you do inspect elements, you have this. Uh, of course, there is. I think could make it. How I could, yeah, I want it this way. Okay, could you do it this way or where? Good changes that they're, um, yeah, they're they're appearing, but basically. Now we want to try to select, okay, to select this paragraph from the web page. How are we gonna do this? Um, just to make it more useful. Um, so you see this select an element in a page. We could use a shortcut for it in Windows, Control Shift C, but I use this arrow. So I just click this arrow and it's, it just specify when I hover over the element, specify where is it uh, like uh, it's um, like it's target it's point to its uh, location in the structure of or it's in the overall structure of HTML. And you see here it's changing. This structure is changing here. It's changing based on what I selecting. So if I select this one, just one I I want to select this one. Now I am. You see here is a hover the highlighting, which is this is uh, the element, which to make a vector where each element corresponds to a different character. This is the paragraph that I want to select. Now I, I did it with just inspecting. Now I want to do this, I will try doing it inside the browser itself without me try going to R and do this and try it out in R itself. So how I could do this? If we if you if you press Control Shift F, um, let's see, is it Control Shift F? Let's see. Oh yeah, so Control F, yeah, not Control Shift F. So Control F, when you hover over this the element tab, uh, you will you, it will appear. Let me see, it will appear this page. So find by string, selector, or X pass. We'll see that we have a way, another way of selecting uh, using the X pass 
which is a kind of um, XML language for selecting elements. Um, but the, the easier one is the selectors of CSS selectors that we talked about. So I want to select this one. Okay, so I want to just select the same, the, the ones that I, we said we want to select for. I get it in the in the element tab, but I don't want that. I want I want it with using selectors. So how I could do this? So I see the structure. When I see the structure, it's consist of inside a section. So this this is a section, and inside it there is an H3, a paragraph, a div, and a paragraph that we want to select. Now how I could select a section, and this is repeated of course this is repeated over time so how i could do this we could do like section okay so it will like see every section in the page but let's see let's try this one section inside section i want um box cell right so yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is one of them, but mainly we just, um, because again, that, as I said before, classes are having multiple elements with the same class name. So it's, we can do this using this way. So you should, to select elements, you have to know the overall structure of the HTML and then go through it until we reach this element. Um, so we want this one with it with a okay. So if you want this one, we have to, to see if it, there is an ID for the section itself. And there is one. So if we said that this is the, the ID of the section, where is it? It's prerequisite? No, it's, um, let's see it again. Yeah, it's extracting data. So this is the ID name. I'm getting the ID name instead of the section. I'm specifying it with the hash. So what I did, is it this one that I want? Not this, not particularly, but we are close. See that we are close because I use the identifier that gets a section. Then inside the section, I get the first cell. I get the first cell, which is the last name. Now I get it, but I want it on the paragraph, not the cell. So why would I use um, I won't use it. Let's say the paragraph, first paragraph. Yeah, and that's it. We we got the first one. Let's see. We got this one at first, and you see here that we have selected three elements. So there is three elements that co that um, confirm this specific selecting uh, selectors um, expression. So there is three paragraph inside the, the section that called extracting data. And let's verify this. If you see here, this is a paragraph one, two, three. So this is the one, two, three paragraph. So we have three paragraph actually. And um, yeah, this is how I do it. Uh, which we're using the inspecting and using um, the selectors. So just remember so, to use this uh, arrow and to use, uh, to if you want to try this, you're selecting your selectors uh, inside the, the web browser itself, do uh, control F uh, in the tab element here, and you will just, this will come up and you, tr you could try it without even trying it in, uh, in R. Okay. So that was something. So, so anything that you uh, don't understand here, Abdu? Oh, no, it's fine. I'm, I'm just saying that this uh, 
doing it manually could be time consuming, I guess. Yeah, it's doing it manually, but uh, yeah. try it. You will automate all this by pro using programming in R. But uh, if, if you want to try to select, to try to try the selector, if it's working or ready or not, how yeah. you, if you should ra rerun our uh, our our code again and again and again. And instead of before, instead of that, just try it in the in the web browser. And if it's work in a web browser, now you could use it in uh, in the R code. Um, yeah, because, because I'm thinking, you know, at some point in the chapter, he stressed the point that once you, before you do the US scripting, you just try to inspect, spend some time um, um, inspecting to decide which selector you are doing. So I think that's the first thing you have to do before doing all this thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so once you identify the selector, then you start to do all this uh, other things. So he mentioned that, in, and, and I think he even stressed that point. Yeah. Um, so yeah, another important function HTML element. Yeah, the same as elements, elements and element with is without an S. Elements is it's like selecting a lot of um, many any type of number or any 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 number of uh, tags out there with a P tag or with an, this kind of class or with this. Of course, this is can be uh, can be more than one element because this is an ID identifier. Um, but elements for multiple uh, elements and element is just one element. It just if you use B, it'll get the first B, this one, this one here. We'll get this first B because one element. Um, and uh, other than just if you use elements, we get the both B. Uh, in the HTML structure. So yeah, there is a important difference between HTML element element and HTML elements. When you use selector that doesn't match any element, HTML element returns a vector with of length zero, where HTML element returns a missing value. So this is an important distinction. Uh, if you want to see how what is the number of elements that specify this criteria of selecting? You should use uh, HTML elements with NS. If you want uh, to to just select an element and if it's not it's not returning anything or it's not exist, uh, it would return missing value. Then you use HTML element. This is a kind of validation methodology you could use uh, or add uh, in your uh, workflow. Um, so yeah, nesting selection, and this is HTML element. Uh, okay. okay, so you just again you're just repeating this as the same um, selecting part that we talked about. Um, yeah, to extract the name of each character, we use HTML element because we apply to the output HTML elements. Um, so we still talked here about the selection uh, as a hierarchy. So if we if we decide if you do the H, the the list which is this one all of the list you selecting all the list using HTML elements all list items here now you select this those uh, using the HTML elements you could continue the uh, the workflow to, to to select the B tags inside uh, each list item so the b tag uh we could use after you selecting all the elements that uh, that listing or a, a list item tag in the list item tag uh all of them so now we could go into more depths and select the b tags inside them and this is the way you just uh, use html element which is an element inside the um, um html and html element it's actually um, like, like uh, executed on each of the each one of the list that provided from HTML HTML elements. So you will find it not just one element. You, you, here you you get get the same number of elements that you provided to it. So just the way to select an element inside an elements. Um, yeah. 
So the distinction between HTML element and HTML elements isn't important for the name, but it's important for the weight. We want to get on weight for each character, even if there is no weight span. Um, yeah, again, here it, it tried to, uh, uh, like, selecting this class uh, weight span, this span, um, using this uh, class dot weight. Uh, same, the same one, yeah. Uh, yeah, let's move on to the text. So, we can use ex we can extract plain text contents of an HTML element using this HTML text two, where you extract only the text without the tags. So you you remove the tags from the HTML uh, structure or um, strings that you have, and you just leave it leave it, leave out with just uh, like here you see the span and the span tag is deleted with the, with the class all of this deleted. And this deleted and it's just returns this. Same with all. So this is how to extract only the text inside the tags uh, using the HTML text tool. Uh, what else? Yeah, we could extract an attribute, which is very useful if you deal if we will deal with um, a length, and also useful if we deal if we will deal with an image. Because an image, um, you see here, um, if you do, uh, okay, so there is an attribute for an image tag, which is a source, the source of an image. And it doesn't contain any uh, content inside the tags itself, but it contains the, the, just the source inside the attribute. So if you see, let's see, let's try, try to see here. I have, yeah. Let's let's take this as an example. If you see here, how we could, yeah, inspecting this. Okay, this is an image. Okay, so we have a source attribute, and the source attribute is pointing to the the location or the source of an image itself. Where and this is very important if you want to get a lot of um, the link of the image itself to be able to download it afterward or do something with it. Uh, so to extract this or to use it, um, we we use the HTML attribute where you where we select attribute inside the tag. So after you selecting the elements and then select one element inside the elements. Um, you could like in each one of them select the um, uh, the output or the value of the attribute so if you see here this is um this is a two tags b tags and we want to select the, the like getting this uh the, the link the link for each one of them and to do this we do html elements get all b's b tags and then in each one of them each piece go into and get the a tag inside the b the each one of in each p uh, or, or each paragraph the a tag which is an anchor have an attribute we want this attribute so to get the attribute we select it we select it using the html attribute which is href the output of this is the lengths in in sequence so you get the two links, this one and this one, the dog and the cat. Uh, this is how you could select attributes and very useful, it's very useful to be selecting, to get links, to get um, uh, uh, anchor tags, links, and also images, image link. And it's, but in, in the image case, uh, here you could, yeah, you will see, or it would say image instead of, a, of an anchor. And here we will say a uh, source attribute instead of href. Uh, for cyber reference. Okay, so now let's go into the tables because we see all the time tables are in like like here. There is a table I was trying to extract uh, using this, and 
this table consists of uh, the cakes and its um, its picture, the picture of the cakes, uh, its origin, where it's where it's basically come from in the first place, and some I think ingredients, some ingredients and description. So this is an Wikipedia page, and all Wikipedia's are having this kind of uh, tables, and it's kind of useful if you want to try to extract information to uh, to use it somewhere else. Um, so you, if you if you inspect this, uh, you see here that this is called this is have a class called white wiki tip table, and this class is very popular to extract data from wiki uh, Wikipedia tables. Um, so it's 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 well known. So to extract the table structure, we use um, Let's go back. We use this uh, HTML table uh, function, and HTML table function to do to do it properly. Uh, let's see. Let's see an example because I did I did it before. Where is it? Where is it? Um, let's see. Okay. Um, okay. Let's this. Now something wrong here. Let's see if it's working. Is it working or not? Yeah, it's working. So this is a shiny app, small shiny app. I tried to do it on the fly um, for the session. Uh, I just get the text inside this one here. So here is a text. And here is um, here's the name. This is the data table uh, structure uh, in Shiny. And uh, you'll see here the, the picture is not appearing, which is logical because data table or table, uh, HTML underscore table that we talked about here, this, this function is getting just only the cells that have a text in them. So if 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 anything other than text, you will find it not working. You should have a, another way to do it. Ha, have another way to uh, construct or get the information of the images itself to store it in the in the tuple or something. And I I did already uh, here in, in the example, but it's it's not that important. But here I. All I did in the code, let's go into the code. All I did is I created a function called get table. It provided with a wiki link or a URL and use this read HTML that we talked about. Then after the, this HTML, uh, I created a variable called data table and use this HTML element to select the wiki table that we talked about also. Then convert this element as a, this is a structure, this is a document, HTML document, and this is HTML table. All it's doing is convert the structure into a physical table uh, or tuple, sorry, tuple inside R. So what is returned is a tuple in, in, a, in a way. So this shiny app is all it's doing. We have courses that we have here, 50 could like um, show the number of element and could search for something. Yes, apple cake. Uh, and this is provided by Shiny, so it's some kind of uh, useful way to, 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 to construct a table on the fly. So yeah, this is how you extract information from a web page and convert it into a tuple and also like um, using it, use it like, um, just using selectors, like the tweaky tip. Okay. Hope this was clear. Yeah, um, thanks. It's, it's looked interesting. I, I'm not sure if we will be able to complete chapter. Is, uh, uh, if what remains is a lot, I don't know. Uh, no, it's. I think it's it's, it's ending. Because like, maybe in the next five ten minutes I have to leave. So yeah, yeah. If you could uh, uh, go through it, uh, then. Yeah. But 
the main stuff are been told uh, already, yeah. so uh, we just go through it very quickly. The other two uh, or three uh, still. So finding the right selectors, uh, and I think it's um, very obvious. You have to study selectors to do this more properly. Uh, here we told about he talked about the inspecting, which we talked about it already. So we will go into it. Um, let's escape this. Putting it all together, you scrape some website, do some risk. Um, uh, there's some risk uh, that this example may no longer work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we all do this. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is. It's just g giving you another examples to do stuff. And here we he used the uh, HTML text to extract an um a text inside this. So if you want to just extract the text without the tags that we talked about before, we use this, uh, HTML text too. Um, anything else? So yeah, you could then construct using, so you could like, this is a way, interesting way to define a tuple. And each column are the way are an, are in, uh, are an, ex, an extraction itself, an extraction process itself. So here you you say that name the name of the column and this, uh and you provide it with a section then extract from the section what you want. I here I was I want a title so I selected H two element and then I convert it to into text into text. Uh, here I want to, uh, the release date so I have uh, I selecting the P the B tag then convert it to the text then I do some uh, removing uh, or uh, analysis. The uh, string manipulation, I, I would say that, uh, to to get the release date. Same with here, the director into another uh, um, column, intro with a crowd, and the ending. It's we we got this, this table table that every one of them are in extraction in itself, uh, extraction process, quick in ex extraction process, just by using selectors. Yeah, that's it. So, um, for yeah, this is an example, other example for extracting films data, but uh, it's, it's the same. Here we said HTML table. We talked about HTML table and that it's uh, extracting. You see here, it's interestingly enough, it doesn't uh, get anything about the images. You see here, it's an uh, in, in A and A and A because it uh, doesn't have anything to do with it. Uh, it's also it's just extracting text. Um, yeah, and you could use patterns. Of course, this is a, a regular expression functions. Uh, I think uh, I don't know if it's we have uh, we will talk about regular expression, but um, yeah, we already talked about it. Yes, yes, yes. Already talked about it. Yeah, yeah, we we already talked about that. Yeah. But uh, but uh, I didn't see this one before. The, think, no, I think uh, I think you presented. Uh, uh, wider you, you present, I think you presented the chart. Is it on the spreadsheets uh, or maybe databases? I'm not sure, but we. I remember we used this. Yeah, uh, you could. I could. You could you forget about it? Yeah, I, I think we use it. I'm. I'm not sure which of the chapters, but I remember. Awesome. So yeah, just you just separate strings based on conditions that you define a bat Trends that you define, and the, the, the pattern here is like, like the rank is uh, D plus, which is the double or a number, any kind of number plus. Um, and this anything else title is anything else other than the number, and the year is the 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 final um, the final text itself. Uh, this is a text altogether. Where is the text altogether? Uh, yeah, this is the text. Yeah, it doesn't show it here. Okay. Oh yeah, this is the text altogether, and then he like uh, extracting the information from it. So, dynamic side. So yeah, this is the final one, and and we can wrap it wrap it up. So far, we have focused on website where HTML elements returns what we see in the browser as it's cast how to parse uh, and discuss how to parse uh, what is returns and how to organize information in tidy data frames. 
Uh, from time to time, however, you have, you will hit a site where HTML element and friend don't return anything like what you see in the browser. In many cases, that's because you are trying to scrape the website that dynamically generated content uh, by JavaScript. So JavaScript is is the one is the language where you uh, generate or manipulate content in web application. So in some cases, you will find some kind of website will will each content are being generated on the fly in real time. So that's why you will find that uh, you will not be able to reach that this uh, using our best because our best is mainly do doing this as the one downloading the HTML element. That's what we talked about here because our best downloads are all HTML and doesn't run any JavaScript in the, in the process. Uh, it's still possible to scrape these type of sites but our vets need to use a more expensive um, process for simulating the browser, the web browser, and simulating the web browsing. Uh, there is a very popular package uh, in Python called Selenium, Selenium, which is mainly doing this, like replacing the web, your web browser or web session with a, a physical, um, a semi, uh, a virtual browser. I would say that. Um, oh, oh, but sorry, sorry. Does the the, the beautiful soup uh, does uh, this uh, adjustment automatically, or you have to put this? Uh, it doesn't do that. Like in Python, so, I mean. Yeah, in Python, yes, it it does oh. this automatically. It just oh. the session as it as if you are the opening the browser, but it's in behind the scenes the engine, the Selenium itself, it's opening the browser. Uh, and it's you can do anything like uh, you can do like uh, a click, uh, a hover, as you as an, a human being. So it's just you can create a, a really uh, journey, a user journey using this uh, Selenium package. Or ho here also it can uh, I think it's called the uh, Chrome Auto package. Uh, you could use this in Chrome browser uh, to do the same thing in R. Uh, but in Selenium it's it's just it, you can um represent the the user interaction with the browser um as uh as automatically as possible like in, you could in real time for that. yeah as you are the ones that open the browser and then uh selecting and copying and pasting and do stuff so yeah this is very powerful because you find you'll, you'll find a lot of jobs are very 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 dependent on this uh you just um a huge amount of websites at the same time and automate the way it is because they have the same structure you just give it a list of websites and they uh get all the data and then extract all, all information from it um so yeah this is very powerful but again it's uh could be Ill illegal sometimes you have to be careful uh before you're doing web scraping you have to check the robots the the text file um and if I see here robots and text, and this this is the final thing, robots or text. Let's see. So you will find a lot of explanations, but I want to see how I could get it from any website. Uh, remember that there is a pass to do certain pass. Um, Let's see. It's a subdirectory or something. Okay, let's let's try and do this. Let's get this. Uh, okay. What was well, this? Yeah, that's it. So you just give a name of the website and um, slash robot dot text. You will find this in any website, any kind of website. And here we we find this uh, this protocols the user agent basically the uh, you what is allowed to be scraped is this in allowed what is this allowed to be scraped uh, and you find it more like if you if you search about it you'll learn more about it because there is a lot of configuration in this kind of stuff uh, but this is mainly how you get, you can get uh, robot to text. Oh, and this, yeah. is, this is quite, this is quite uh, interesting. Thanks. I mean, this is quite interesting to know. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah. thank you for listening and um, 
I know I, I get through it very quickly, but uh, I think it's a very useful chapter to uh, to understand. Yeah, uh, sure. So thank you. And uh, I think we can wrap it up here. Thank you very much. Yeah, for, yeah. yeah. thanks. Yeah, bye. Bye. So I think we could we should uh, stop the recording. Oh.